first of all, like thank Alina, uh, Mike, and uh, uh, Philip for uh, for the invitation to uh, to speak in the in the number theory web. Um, so it's a uh, it's it's pleasure to to be here. Uh, so today I'm gonna talk about uh, algebra cycles. Um, but more emphasize on uh, questions over number fields. Well, since this is a a, a number theory talk, so that um, so but later on I will really focus on um a sort of special class of algebra cycles. Uh, uh, starting from diagonal cycles and a uh, few kinds of generalization of diagonal cycles. So it's really some kind of generalized diagonal cycles. So so let's say recall that. Um, so algebra cycles, um, so we will only talk about algebra cycles over a variety, uh, which is which is going to be assumed to be smooth projective for, for the whole talk. Um, so this will be assumed to be smooth projective for the whole talk. Um, so recall that this just means I'm, I'm considering linear combination, formal combination of closed sub-variety. Um, so Z or some irreducible, um, irreducible ones of certain fixed co-dimension. So consider formal com finite formal com combination with, well, in the beginning, we can look at a Z coefficient, but eventually we will just look at a rational coefficient. So, um, so what we want to consider is, of course, uh, the um, sort of invariants attached to algebra cycles, um, such as uh, cycle classes in cohomology groups. Um, or maybe uh, the most uh, refined relation. Um, so we can consider the sort of so-called Chow group. So those are defined by so by fixing a co-dimension. Um, let me put J. So co-dimension I. So I is a co-dimension. Um, so this will be. Cycles, algebra cycles of co dimension I modular so called rational equivalence. So, rational equivalence. So, one example would be if I is one. Um, so, here, okay, let's actually let me also fix a, a ground field F. Um, so if I is one, so this gives us the more well studied uh, so called divisor class group, which is actually uh, isomorphic to Picard, um, Picard group. Sorry, Picard group of um, of this variety. This is this is more. We we have better understanding in the co-dimension one case. Uh, in the higher co-dimension case, it's rather difficult to study. Um, so here, so as you can see that um, if now we start to uh, Im impose the condition that for, for, you know if f is number field, so in that case. We see that even the divisor case is hard to study because, well, I mean, it depends what we want to know. Um, uh, because you see that this question of studying Picard, Picard group or divisor class group uh, already in, in, uh, include, for example, if X is a curve, if X is a curve, then we know that, well, there's a degree map taking degree to the kernel degree zero guys, uh, this will be sort of the multi-way group. So this, for the Jacobian variety.
of this curve. Um, so that's we know that's pretty hard stuff. Well, um, related to the birch and direct conjecture. Um, so that's in the co dimension one case. So in higher co dimension case, this becomes slightly. I mean, this becomes even more more difficult. Uh, nevertheless, th there's a belief that in higher co dimension case. Um, so here we know this is related to invariants such as L function. by the birch smodar conjecture. So in high dimensional case, there's also such expectation due to uh, Benison, uh, Benison uh, or Bloch-Hokato Bro conjecture. So there's there's a belief that there's a relation between between Chow group, especially the uh, the part which has trivial cohomology class. So here, this is really the cohomology cycle class in the cohomology. Um, this is H2, this curve, let's say over C. Um, okay, so that's that's um let's sort of look at the general picture. It's it seems to be hard to do anything with such generality. So now I'm gonna move to the uh what do we want to do in the uh, as we I said in the title of the talk. So you want to study various sort of diagonal cycle. So actually, for a number of theoretical interest, in, uh, uh, interest it's um, so see here. Um, so sort of arithmetic interesting cycles. Well, for, for geometric reason, the geometric interesting cycles are mostly in the in the middle the middle code dimension. Um, so here, uh, because well. At least the cohomology group, we know only the middle degree cohomology uh, contains most information. Um, so for, for arithmetic cycles, like the example of curve, we see that the condemnation one seems to be the most interesting case. Um, so, so what actually wants to have a case where the total total variety, well, the ambient variety uh, has all the dimension. So this is sort of so it has all the dimension, say two, two n plus one, where the cycle has co-dimension, uh, or maybe two n minus one. So this is so-called arithmetic middle dimension. Um, so n is so n is zero, n is one. We get a divisor on the curve. Um, so the next case we would like to consider the curve on threefold and so on. So, so this is sort of arithmetic interesting because if you look at integral model, if you consider integral model over so the integers, then the dimension gets uh, added by one and the, the integral model of the cycle has actually middle dimension in on this uh, scheme over, over integer runs. So this has dimension two n where this has a co dimension n, which is actually in the middle dimension. So that's the sort of one side side remark. So we, we would like to really consider situation where the dimension of total of ambient variety is actually odd, where the cycle has co dimension exactly half, uh, slightly bigger than a half. Um, okay, so back to diagonal cycle. So we know the classical di diagonal. So now I'm going to change the notation a little bit. So now I'm going to consider x being, again, a smooth projective variety, but now I can consider the product. So we know the classical diagonal cycle. Uh, you know, it's just the diagonal embedding. So diagonal embedding of of this variety to the to the to the square to the self product, so we know this this plays an important role in in, in algebraic geometry, um, and even even in this case we still have a lot of um, questions unanswered, uh, such as you know the diagonal um, is supposed to decompose uh, according to uh, the uh, 
Q-length decomposition for the cohomology. So this actually is supposed to decompose as sum of delta i where delta i acts on, um, well, this in the child group of the product of the appropriate degree uh, such that delta i acts on the cohomology uh, being the projector to maybe I just J being the projector to, to the ith component being a projection. So this is sort of a, uh, the QNF decomposition. So this is still not known in general. Um, so, but okay, so that's at least in some special cases, this is known, for example, if X is a curve. Um, and I think it's also known in the case of a surface, but in general, it's it's not known. Um, so in the case of a curve, so we have sort of good understanding about this diagonal cycle. So now, so this is the first class of diagonal cycle. Um, well, this is not in the arithmetic middle degree because uh, the, that it's actually exactly in the middle middle code dimension. So I want, if I want to have something more arithmetical, so we can consider the so-called uh, uh, small diagonal. So in the case of a curve, this was studied by uh, Gross and Sean in the uh, maybe, maybe late 80, early 90. So I can consider a curve rather than considering a diagonal to the square, I can consider the embedding of So this is a curve inside of Q, uh, third power. So, so that's a threefold. I have a curve in a threefold. So, okay, unfortunately, I'm going to use the same notation uh, delta. So maybe, maybe it's not so standard notation in this case now. Um, but nevertheless, I, I have this diagonal embedding. Um, so it's interesting question to know whether well whether this class is is trivial or not in the child group and of course when I first have to take care of the cohomology class so the cohomology class is so if I look at this class in the in the child group of x3 um so I have a cycle class for the cohomology so here let me denote um so yeah h it's a co-dimension two cycles, H4 of X3. Let's say I look at the complex fiber, uh, the Bailey co singular cohomology, Bailey cohomology. Um, so it's easy to actually trivialize the cohomology. So gross shown define the modification. You can you can modify easily uh, to get a, a cycle with trivial cohomology. So let's so this modification. So let me re recall you this mo modified modified diagonal or small diagonal so, cycle. so this by definition depends on depends on the choice of a base point I can choose a choose a point on X um, then I can define the modified for the Delta e this is gonna be uh, the main diagonal modified by some small uh, sort of partial diagonal so more precisely I can write Delta minus um, Okay, delta one. Let me. Okay, let me. Let me denote. Let me record. I have those partial diagonal. Namely, I can. I can look at. Say delta one. This will be. So you you let the first two coordinates to be the same, or the third one being constant. So there's some partial diagonal. Um. On the on the triple product. So of course you also consider the. The other two uh, similarly defined partial diagonal, but then you can also define diagonal so by uh, allowing two two coordinate. So the first two coordinate being being this constant point. So okay, 
So we should so the correct again. So maybe correct the first step. Maybe the correction is too much. So we just add it back. Delta one two and it's uh, you know switch in the indices. So that's this turns out to be this modified diagonal turns out to be uh, to have a trivial cohomology class. That's uh, it's quite easy to compute that. Um, So one natural question will be, um, well, actually, Gross and Sean, um, in their paper, they proved that this class uh, is trivial in the child group um, if, so, so, um, So of course, one wants to know if this is actually now a trivial class in the child group. So, uh, so Gross and Schoenle proved it is true if if x is hyper. Well, okay. First of all, there's also a choice of base point. So a good choice of base point, as you can imagine, the most canonical choice of of, of the base point E will, will be the can well will be the canonical class. So, so now let's see. It turns out that it's easy to see that if if this is now if, if this is zero in the child group, again here my child group is has a rational coefficient. Um, if this is zero, then actually this class. So earlier I defined just using one base point. Uh, you can generalize this construction to any any divisor of degree one. Um, so so here I'm gonna use that version. So, so okay now really I'm taking e to be any class in the Picard of degree one. Um, so the actually vanish of this class, a necessary condition is that this base point or base class has to be a multiple of the canonical class. So really it has to be, um, you know, two G minus two um, divided by the, let's say the canonical class. Let's, let's write as, let's write this as so E to be uh, the class of the canonical bundle. Um, let's write this as C of X. So for now, I'm, I'm going to assume the base point is the base class is, is, is this multiple of canonical class. So gross room prove that actually this, if you do that, so delta C, this uh, modified diagonal vanishes if, if the curve is hyper elliptic. So in other words, if there, if there is an involution uh, and the quotient of, of the curve by that involution is P1. So that's when result of the proof. Um, so when the actual question was actually can, um, does, does there exist curve which are, um, which have vanishing diagonal class or this modified diagonal class, uh, for non hyper elliptic curve. So the question is whether they exist non hyper hyper elliptic. Such that this class what is zero. Mm. Um so I should also remark that this is, this cycle class is is more or less more or less the same. I mean, in the sense that the, the simultaneous vanishing um, the same as the so-called Charissa cycle, which which were sort of studied much much earlier. So Charissa cycle is is defined by the following: If I have a curve x, I can look at the embedding into Jacobian variety of x. By choosing a, a base point, so now let's choose the same base class. Um, so then you can look at the image x minus negative one pullback of of x. So this this class is called a Charissa cycle. So, so this lies in the child group of one cycle of the Jacobian. So so th this was sort of a much uh, well studied before and it was known for generic curve. Um, 
this class is non-zero, so over complex number. So, so actually, for, for the moment, everything can be done over the complex number. So we don't have to really assume the base field is a number field. Um, so if you think about uh, the moduli space of all the curves uh, of fixed uh, fixed genus G, I can assume G is at least two because it's, it's understood what happens when G is zero and one. Um, so if G is two or higher on the moduli space, Teresa proved already that this cycle is actually non uh, rationally non-trivial. Um, if um, well, if you look at the general curve. So the question is actually what about sort of the so the so-called special curves? Uh, so the natural question, I mean, one question would be what what is the most most special curve? Um, so here, well, that depends on how uh, how people approach the, uh, the space of all genus curve G curve. Uh, so maybe one one way for me maybe the most special ones are so-called Horace curve. It's it's like uh, in the case of elliptic curve, we we believe curves with more elliptic curve with bigger endomorphins run, namely so called curves with, with complex multiplications. This should be more special. So here maybe we should consider uh, curves with the largest possible automorphins runs as being the most special curves. I mean those are very special in the sense also they are sort of isolated. There are only finding many. Uh, such curves in any given genus. So this is so-called Horace curve. Horace curve. So namely a curve of fixed genus um, such that the automorphism group, well, we know the order is bounded by uh, 42 times the degree of canonic bound though. So 84 times G minus one. So the Horace curve are precisely the curve with uh, maximum possible. Um, I mean, this equality might not be achieved for, for every G, uh, but anyway, we know, for example, if G is, uh, G is three, there's a Klein curve, quality curve, which has genus three and has automorphism group of order 168. And uh, uh, I think in the next example is, is the genus seven case, so this case is 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 even more special uh, because actually um, it's a stat, um, it's a Shimura curve. It can be realized as a Shimura curve. Uh, it's also a Shimura curve attached to a certain degree three total real field. Uh, uh, <clears throat> with a full level structure uh, at, at prime two. So, so in this case, it's automorphism group. So I'm, I'm not gonna see too much here. So here, this is actually a, a group of order 84 times six, right? Um, it's actually PGL to F8. Um, so it's a finite group. So Shimura and Leolis that this, this curve is actually, can be written as Shimura curve, although, uh, Freak and Macbeth, this status curve uh, even before Shimura. Um, so, so one theorem we proved. So one, let me still state one result here. So a theorem I proved with Tony and Chu um, last year was um, uh, actually for this curve we know the Grosjean cycle, the modified diagonal cycle. So if X is this uh, Horace curve of genus seven, so so-called the uh, uh, freak uh, Macbeth curve, then um, this class is zero in the child group. So this was known, and um, well, if you consider not the child group, but the class in the uh, intermediate Jacobian, uh, this was, was already proved. <clears throat> So the key here was actually um, the first cohomology, so the Bailey cohomology. Well, if you turn to C, so with complex coefficient, so this has this is a representation for P, PGO two 
F8, so which is a finite group of a Lie type. It's actually, uh, well, it's, it, it, it's, it's more or less, well, it cannot be reducible. I mean, it's decomposed as H10 using Hodge decomposition. So each piece is actually irreducible um, representation of dimension seven. Uh, and it's actually a cuspidal representation for this finite group of lead type. So you can actually exactly, you can write down exactly what this representation is. And you can, um, so our theorem was actually, you, if you check the th third tensor power, um, so I have a group action called a G here. So you can look at the diagonal invariance, G action. So if this has no, if there's no invariant, then then our theorem shows that actually this class must be must be tr uh, trivial. So in other words, we prove sort of a criterion. I mean, unless it's a sufficient condition for the class to be to be to be zero, uh, using uh, using certain sort of additional symmetry on on the curve. If a curve has a large automorphism group such that uh, this third tensor power of uh, the representation on the G, the representation of G, the automorphism group on the on the first cohomology. If this invariant space is is zero, then then you you can conclude this class is actually trivial in the child group. So so that's one sort of. Um, so going back here, we're trying to study this diagonal cycle for curve. Um, so one example where you can you can um, you can prove this class vanish. So of course, still. We believe the vanishing is 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 very um, rare. So at least for Horowitz curve, uh, it, we tend to believe only finding many um, Horowitz curves have this property. So, or only finally. Harvest curve. <clears throat> so those curves, I mean, they all depend over a number of fields. They have very large automorphism group. Um, um, but okay, so we don't really have much, we don't have a lot of evidence towards this conjecture, but somehow we the, the proof seems to indicate it seems to be rare to to have such um, vanishing for for some of the most special curves on the on the module space of uh, Curves with given genus. Um, so okay, that's one one thing I want to want to talk about. So now next I want to. Well, since we know, it seems to be Can rare to have any. Uh, yes. Um, do you know at least that that if you take instead of asking about the triviality of this cycle, if you ask about H one X tensor three, G invariance. Right. Do you know that that is zero for only? Uh. For Horace curve, we we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Uh, so okay. So right, we don't actually we proved something, but I'm trying to recall what we exactly proved. So we, we checked uh for certain representations for a certain family of so yes, I mean okay. So we don't we haven't we haven't proved. So in other words, a, a weaker conjecture right would be uh this condition here. How do I actually, um, let me see, okay. Uh, trying to highlight what I want, maybe this is it here. Yeah, okay, this this then we haven't, we also, of course, when we, we conjecture, this is true only for uh, finally many horse curve, right? So that's same to be, um, um, Accessible, um, but actually we don't know how to prove it. So we don't know how to prove it. this is true only for finite many horse curve. Okay. So that's a maybe so that's that, your... that can be expressed just in terms of representation. You can convert it exactly. To so that's explicit. just um, yeah, exactly okay. explicit. But still, the difficulty is curve, This G is still the G representation is not still not so easy to to write down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so probably let, let, let me recall that we in fact proved this for P, PSL two FQ, right? If G is a yeah, so we did prove that if 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 a horse curve has G being PSL two maybe FQ, and you find the yeah. field in that case we can prove it, but I think not. The problem is this doesn't exhaust or 
Horace uh, automorphism group. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's so now I want to move to some something which at least give us possibly something which uh, you know non-trivial example, right? So okay. So this is uh, I'm gonna specialize to the case. So now so now x is a Shimura curve. Um, so in this case, actually, um, the question is related to, well, in this case, I have the third power, the triple product. Um, one can actually study the quotient of the or isogeny factor of, of the Jacobian variety. So I can project down. So if I take three isogeny factor of the Shimura curve. So, okay, by the way, when I say Shimura curve, I have already implicitly fixed uh, a division algebra over a total real field, uh, division quaternion algebra over a total real field, uh, and so on. So I can take, say for simplicity, let's say, let's say I have three elliptic curves, uh, which are isogeny factor of the Jacobian. So that I have, you know, I have this map. So here I'm using, what well, in the case of, if the base field is Q, uh, we know every every elliptic curve arises as a quotient of um, Jacobian of uh, Shimura curve. So, so in that case, you see that actually every um, elliptic curve can appear in this uh, triple product of elliptic curves. Um, Well, in, in general, actually, so um, so in general, if you have any abelian variety, we know that every abelian variety can appear as isogeny factor of Jacobian variety of curve. So we can, in some sense, we can. So here we're just trying to generalize uh, the idea we had before. We let's say we want to project the diagonal class uh, on the triple product of a curve to certain product of abelian varieties. So you see that actually, in general, we can always. Uh, manage to produce certain class and any triple product of abelian varieties. So here, let's just say, let's test the idea in the case of elliptic curves. Um, um, for the reason that for elliptic curve, we actually have sort of modularity, um, at least conjecturally over general number field. Um, so we can use actually Shimura curve to, to realize um, To realize the idea we just mentioned, so so here, so I can look at the projection here. Also look at the modified diagonal cycle. So let's let's just write this as a. This is abelian variety where a is are, say elliptic curves. I mean, for simplicity, let's say I'm working with base field being rational number. Um. So I can look at so then I get this class called a delta a. As in, it's a one cycle on this Sabina variety. Has trivial cohomology class. So by what I mentioned earlier, the generalization of uh, BSD conjecture, where well, this class um, should contribute to to the vanishing of vanishing order of um, of the corresponding L function. So in this case, so we expect so some kind of gross Zagier phenomenon. So so here. So cross Zagi phenomenal. Um, so in this case, we would expect this guy should have connection to, to corresponding L function. So this is some theorem we proved. Um, I proved with Xin Yuan, uh, Xiu Zhang. Um, so here we are not a, um, we don't have a complete result um, I mean, we don't have a result as general as I stated here, but let me see if I assume, if I assume AI, the elliptic curve have, have all have semi-stable reduction. So AI yeah, have uh, semi, uh, square free conductor. Square free conductor. So let's assume that. So then actually we prove um, this class um, if you compute the so-called uh, balancing blow height pairing, um, so here I said the cohomology class is trivial. So this is cohomology class is trivial. Um, 
so this actually gives you the first derivative of the Hasse VL function um, out of the central point. In this case is two. Um, so here, when I say that uh, Hasse V is zeta function, I really meant you know the part which uh, comes from the primitive part. Uh, so namely H one of A AI, so the tensor product of of the theta module of the elliptic curve. Okay, so um, so that's the result um, we actually could prove. So this allows us at least, I mean, theoretically, this allows us to to get a, um, uh, a, a, a you know, so conjecturally, this actually left-hand side, the height pairing is conjecturally non-degenerate. So it should actually tell us exactly when the cycle is non-zero in the child group. Well, unconditionally, at least we know if the side, if the height pairing is non-zero, then the cycle class should be non-zero. So, so that, so in that way, uh, we at least have have some theoretical um, uh, way of getting non non-zero cycle um, diagonal cycle um, using L function of uh, of of this triple product of uh, elliptic curves. Okay, so that's one theoretical result um, in this direction. Um, so now I have spent like most of my time to study this sort of small diagonal. So I want to, so my, at least my ab abstract, I wanted to give two other classes of cycles related to diagonal cycle. So now let me, um, so let me say my next class is, ah, um, well, okay. So let me also propose sort of some question here. Maybe those questions should be natural after we saw this um, triple product curve. So one would, of course, naturally wonder what happened if I um, look at higher power of elliptic curve or more or product of more than three elliptic curves, right? So if I take a, it could be more, you know, more than three. Say so, so n n, where n is bigger equal to three or, you know, say more equal curves. So uh, is, there, is there any way of producing uh, algebra cycles in the, um, in um, in middle middle code dimension, or I mean in arithmetic middle code dimension. Um, so that, um, it's kind of strange. Somehow for the moment, the only thing we have is actually sort of not more than three curves, uh, a little curves. If you have more, um, seems to be hard. Uh, seems to be no no um, known ways of producing middle uh, dimensional uh, arithmetic middle dimensional cycle. Um, I mean, unless you have you know you have some degenerate ca cases. So, um, all right. So that's one question. I will come back to this question later uh, after I introduce the next two classes of examples. So they are in some sense partially. Uh, the some sense we give some. Hence, how to access this, uh, how to attack this question, at least in some special cases, when you have more than uh, three factors of elliptic curve. So, yeah, so now next I want to talk about sort of another class of diagonal cycle. Um, so, it's, it's sort of not really diagonal cycle in the sense above. Um, so, this is sort of a gangrose prasad, so the GGP. Uh, one called also one might also call diagonal, but you will see it's not not quite the same. Um, so here the general um structure looks as following: if I take a say variety smooth projective variety, I take a divisor. See, so, so why is a divisor? So why has code dimension one? Um, so code dimension one, so a divisor. So why is the divisor? So then I can look at, the, well, I have this map Y embedding into X. So I can look at the graph. So I can look at the graph. So Y goes to uh, Y times X, right? So this actually, by design, this gives us a, a arithmetic middle dimension cycle. Because, uh, um, Right, uh, because y has code dimension one, so 
So the total dimension will be, let's say, this has dimension n, this has dimension n minus one, right? So this will be called dimension n in an ambient variety of two n minus one dimension. <laughs> so, which is really nice. So if we're trying to <clears throat> find some test ground for the generalization of BSC conjecture, this could be perfect because I have something in the middle, in the arithmetic middle, arithmetic middle dimension. Um, <clears throat> so this is indeed the case for, for a large class of Shimura variety. So, so G Gangros Prasad, this study sort of, um, so a large class of Shimura variety with where you, you have this kind of co-dimension one phenomenon, then you take the graph. Um, so more precisely, you can look at, so X to be Shimura variety um, of unitary type. <clears throat> so those are attached to some quadratic so here you have to fix some quadratic extension um, for a unitary group. So this means you, you fix some quadratic extension, let's say um, f over q being imaginary quadratic. Um, then you can look at some Hermitian space. Um, but re with respect to this quadratic, um, quadratic extension, then you can look at unitary group. So here we, are gonna, we can we have to assume um, the signature at Archimedean place to be say m uh, so m one type. So it has has only one negative one sign in the in the, in the um in a signature. So it's, it's indefinite or missing parent. Um, so then you can look at the Shimura variety attached to the unitary group. So unitary group here. So the good thing, the nice feature here is that you can take a Hermitian subspace of a code dimension one with similar signature condition. So that will produce a uh, embedding of unitary group, and this embedding will give rise to embedding of Shimura variety y into x, uh, which are actually co-dimension one. Um, so therefore give you a large supply of examples where you can you can apply this graph, then you get a sort of middle dimensional cycle here. Um, so let's give you a large class of um, uh, cycles, special cycles on, on Shimura, right? On product of Shimura, right? So let's give, give rise to y goes to x times y. Um, and one knows how to, well, in principle, one knows how to compute the Hase V zeta function for this product because there are Shimura varieties. So people have studied uh, in the past like 30, 40 years how to compute the Hase V zeta function. Uh, therefore, you can at least, well, those. Uh, zeta function have are known to have mer meromorphic continuation uh, and so on. So the, uh, so in this case, one of course would like to study the same question as in Gross Zagi or the, the theorem I put with Xin Yuan and Xiu Wu Zhang, where want, you want to relate to the height parent to a uh, special value of L function. So, um, so conjecturally in this case, so sort of very rough description of the conjecture is that um so this you know if you take any any um well okay so why so so here i have so one should imagine decompose the motive of this product according to um the heck algebra action so there's a lot of there's a large supply of correspondence acting on on this uh, ambient variety, so you should sort of decompose into small pieces, ideally in, in, decomposi in, in decomposable pieces. So that can be, those indecomposable ones can be parameters by so, sort of automorphic representations for the corresponding groups in, in the definition of a Shimura variety. So if you take such a representation pi, so, so, so pi is the eigenspace for the Heck algebra. So in this case, you can look at the pi part. 
this is sort of like the case earlier, we are projecting down the cycle class to uh, to some elliptic curves or the product of three elliptic curves. So this is supposed to relate to the derivative of L value to center uh, up to some constant. So this would be sort of the conjecture, conjectural generalization of, of uh, um, uh, gross uh, gross Zaggy formula. Um, so, okay, so regarding this formula, I mean, the, we don't have a result yet, like uh, the one uh, for triple product of, of uh, elliptic curve. Rather, um, we have something close. Um, so theorem. So this is a, uh, um, so we have a draft um, I, I wrote with Daniel Dizzini. Um, so where we prove uh, a p adding version. So we have a p adding version. So we explain on what does that mean? So p adding version. So what one p adding version holds. So in the sense that, so on the left hand side, I have to reduce, I have to um, look at the p adding height here. So p adding height defined by um, um, uh, Nikovar. So there's a PID hat parent. On the right-hand side, I have to look at the first derivative of certain PID or function. PID or function attached to uh, the automorphic world. So again, uh, there's a lot of also like like before, I have this semi, uh, square free conductor condition here. I also have some analog of I've imposed those square freeness for the conductor. So it's not really as general as one would like to to have. But we, yeah, we have this kind of result. Um, all right. Okay. So let me then. So this is one. So now you start to wonder, you know, <laughs> so this kind of construction, what else can you do, right? So what what other construction can you can you come up with? To produce sort of natural uh, algebra cycles. So, so my final, very quickly, I'm going to mention the last class of. Um, so that last one is defined by Yifeng Liu. Um, so, so he defined. Um, something which sort of sits in between those previous two. So, okay, so in, in general, for higher dimensional thing, this triple product does not have really, well, it's, it's too difficult to study if X has higher dimension. If X has so dimension so bigger than two, this becomes much more difficult. And in fact, they, they, they rarely vanish. I mean, the modified diagonal cycle, they, they wouldn't vanish in the child, in the child group. Um, um, unless, you know, very special uh, variety X you, you consider. Um, so nevertheless, if only you, he actually read, maybe there's some kind of, uh, you can actually project down to, let's say, you know, a case when the Jacobian variety or the peak, or maybe the Albanese variety of X, uh, if this is non-zero, say it has isogeny factor, called A, say A is an elliptic curve. So in this case, well, you can you can you can choose a base point, you can you can compose this sort of this map. So you can actually produce a cycle which is easy in the arithmetic middle dimension. So in this way you see that this last class is it's also rather as delta. So delta will be in this child group of two, two factor then times electric curve. So that will be in the arithmetic middle dimension. It's it's an interesting question so to study this situation when, when X is a Shimura variety. So like, like my case earlier. So this was, um, so in this case, if X is Shimura variety for, for unitary group, you know, one type as, as above, so in this case, okay, one one can use well the global questions look very different from here, but actually locally, the will of computing intersecting number can be applied. 
So, um, so you know, work progress of uh, one one of my graduate students. Um, so, is uh, who is working on uh, proving analog periodic formula, periodic height formula, and uh, relating periodic height with um, periodic L function. Um, so, I want to maybe spend. Maybe I'm already running over time already. <clears throat> so I have one more minute to mention what. Um, um, I want to go back to this question I mentioned. If you so, how to attack if you have more more factors here? So, um, so what my final question is? Um, let's. So here you can hopefully you can relate. Um, back to the more power of I mean product with many elliptic curves in the following way. If suppose my just in one example, if I look at Shimura variety attached to U21, so this is a surface. Uh, it's a, it's has two dimension. So it's cohomology should contain the cohomology of product of two curve, uh, elliptic curve. <clears throat> so in this case, theta conjecture would predict you have, if I take two elliptic curve, well, say the same elliptic curve, but self pro self product then base change to the quadratic field, defining the Shimura variety. So, this, so there should be some correspondence predicted by Tate conjecture. Some correspondence here. So then you can hopefully transport the cycle x times x or x times y or the last two construction. Um, let's say these are different curves. So you can hopefully transport any cycle, you know, well, <laughs> You have two factor. You can you can put another two factor then times a, so you can so you can transport cycle. I should use this correspondence times correspondence times identity. So so there should be a way of transporting cycles from the last two construction to to multiple factor uh, product of uh, of uh, of elliptic curves. So therefore, I mean the last two classes of Examples potentially might give application to to the questions of constructing cycles on, on the product of many uh, elliptic curves. Although the the price you have to pay is to actually to solve this uh, to find what well, see if you find an example of um, of this correspondence uh, between Shimura surface and a uh, product of two elliptic curves, then you are able to produce some sort of, you, you can apply this yeah, this idea. Um, okay, to, to wrap up, so I sort of have talked about three classes of diagonal cycle, the, the, the small diagonal of X into triple product, then I have, I have this sort of gangrous process construction of divisor embedded into a ambient variety, and then I take the graph, finally have some um, some sort of Intermediate then between the triple product and the the gross uh, GGP cycle. So um, they seem to be all interesting to me, and um, and they seem to be the only uh, algebra cycles um, in the automorphic world. I mean, related to Shimura, right? Where one can study. Um, hopefully, there will be more being discovered in the in the in the future. And let me let me stop here. Thank you.